If you happen to have a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, I would invite you to go ahead and grab it and read along with me at some of the scriptures we're going to be looking at today. Okay, read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of what we look at today. You have a read. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because sometimes the mouth go, goes quicker than the brain. If you don't have a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, listen. And if you have, say, a Bible and not the scriptures, the authorized version, this isn't going to work for you. Reading to you from Jude, verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. <laughs> Why is Christianity so divided? Why? Hmm? You know, you got to take your hats off to some of these atheists and lost people because it don't take long for lost people, atheists and stuff like that to look at this pathetic joke which is called Christianity and be like, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's something wrong here. You know the thumbnail with the buffet? Okay? There's like a buffet out there. But yet, Christians all claim to believe in one God, one book, and blah, 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 blah. But yet, someone who has a brain in their head will be looking like, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Something's going on here. Something's going on here. Okay? Hmm. Right? Right? How can they, how can all of Christianity be correct, yet they're differing one from another, right? The verse again. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Now, common salvation, common in that context is what? A salvation that is available to all, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? It's common. It's available unto all people, okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, all right? It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered on to the saints. Common salvation. And like I said, it don't take uh, these people that long to look and notice. It's like, well, wait a minute. Common salvation. Yeah, haven't you noticed, you atheists and you lost people, you Christians, that a lot of what Christianity is, isn't that common? As far as salvation? What do you mean? Think about this. You have Catholicism. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism. Okay? The Babylonian religion perfected. Okay? Began in Babylon. It was crafted in Egypt. It is perfected in Rome. Okay? Roman Catholicism is works salvation without assurance of salvation. Okay? All right? You ask a Catholic, um, are you saved? I hope so. How do you know you're saved? Well, I, I had the cookie, and I drank the wine. I was confirmed. I was dipped or thrown water on. Right? Right? Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, if you die today, Catholic, this is a trick question, but this is some, This is one of the 
billions of problems that Satan's religion has, Catholicism. Hey, Catholic, if you were to die today, do you know that you would go to heaven? A Catholic cannot answer that. I said, well, I hope so. What do you mean you hope so? The scriptures tell you you can know that you're going to go to heaven when you die. Well, that's, that's the sin of presumption. I'm presuming upon God that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. A Catholic cannot answer that question. They got to die in a state of grace. So, think about this. Put on your thinking cap here. Catholicism offers a salvation that is, in fact, common. Yes, it is. Anyone can become a Catholic. <laughs> Most people are. <laughs> but, it's not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. Because, in order to receive Christ in Catholicism, you have to eat him and drink his blood. Okay? It's not what the scriptures teach. Catholicism is messed up. Most people can see that, except for the Catholics, okay? They don't have assurance of salvation. So they, in fact, offer something to you that is common. Anybody can become a Catholic. But it's not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. Okay? So, hmm. Calvinism. Calvinism is a members-only club. Think about it. Calvinism's main premise is elect to be saved and not elect to go to hell. Okay? Basic, black and white, that's what it is. Within the election, within those who are elected to go to heaven, okay, they have that tulip thing. Total depravity, uh, what is it? Unconditional election. I might have that wrong. Limited atonement. Limited atonement for those who are elect. Irresistible grace. And um, uh, the perseverance of the saints. Total depravity, unlimited election, or un unlimited election or something about that. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Limited atonement. Irresistible grace. And the perseverance of the saints. You listen to Calvinists like that disgusting, <coughs> vile, <coughs> Paul Washer, okay? Uh, the guy's a Calvinist, all right? Calvinists have to endure to the end, but yet they're elected to go to heaven and stuff like that. They're, they're a joke. See, they're a members only club. And see, those who are not elect, they're going to hell no matter what. Because they're not elect. Okay? Now, the thing about some of Calvinism, uh, about older Calvinists like um, uh, Richard Sibbs, okay? Some of the older Calvinists, when it comes to the mortification of sin and stuff like that, um, like Baxter or uh, Richard Sibbs, John Bunyan wrote one of the greatest books of all time, The Pilgrim's Progress. He was a Calvinistic Puritan. But see, Calvinism's main thing is elect and non-elect. So, Calvinism is not a common salvation. Think about it. What if you're non-elect? They ain't, according to Calvinism, they ain't squat that you can do. Even if you want it with all your being, you've been broken, you've cried out to the Lord, but you come to a Calvinist, well, you're just not elect. It's a members only club. It's not a common salvation. Okay? Alright? And now, and number three, now there are more than this, but these are just examples I'm giving you. The false gracers. Free gracers. The worst of them all. The opiate. The opioid. The gateway drug unto Catholicism. Think about this. You disgusting Richlingites. <laughs> okay. Most people don't remember about uh, nine years ago, and that's what your guys are banking off of. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, free grace. They offer to you a common salvation. They do. They do. But here's the thing. According to free grace, anybody who has a belief in Jesus 
is saved. Anybody. Anybody. And they, w they won't go as far as to say someone is lost. Like the thing that uh, on the channel uh, about Arturo Sosa. Last I checked, no one was stupid enough to say that Arturo Sosa is a saved man. Who is Arturo Sosa? He's the head of the Jesuit order. Okay, but some said, well, I don't know his heart. I'm not going to say he's lost because I don't know his heart. Uh -huh. You know who the free gracers call lost saints? Okay, but they offer you a common salvation. They do. Just believe. Now think about this. Ecumenical, the ecumenical movement was basically, basically instituted by Vatican II. And free gracers, usually 99% of them, actually all that I have ever met, but there might be some out there who are not, they all believe in one God and three persons. There are some free gracers who claim to be dispensational, but salvation is by grace through faith from Genesis on to Revelation. See, People, you know, like, Brad, why do you keep going to the Garden of Eden with the free gracers? They tell you from the Garden of Eden onto the book of Revelation that it's by grace through faith throughout the entirety of Scripture. And anybody with half a brain can read the account in the Garden of Eden and realize it's not by grace through faith. See, the free gracer, especially the Richlingite, can't admit to the truth. Because if they were to rightly admit the truth that, yeah, okay, in the Garden of Eden, it was by works, that would disprove their whole system. They can't do it because they want to hold on to the, they got to hold on to the lie that throughout the entirety of Scripture, it is by grace through faith. There are some out there who say that they are dispensational. Dispensations, within the dispensation, salvation changes. But to the free gracer who claims to be dispensational, salvation never changes. It's begin the same from beginning to end. But that's not the fact. And see, the ecumenical movement bringing all erring people back onto Rome, the separated brethren. Free gracers, all that I've ever encountered, uh, believe in one God and three persons. Uh, Satan, the God of Catholicism. Okay, They don't rightly divide the word of truth like Catholicism. And a majority of them are against the redemption of the purchased possession. And it doesn't make sense that there are these free gracers who believe in the catching way of the body of Christ for the time of Jacob's trouble because that's a change in the dispensation. Okay? That's a change in the dispensation. Once we get redeemed, the dispensation changes and it reverts back to faith and works. Okay, all right. It, it's it's. But see, a lot of them do that for the suspension of disbelief to pass on to you people that they're actually saved people. They're not. They're not. Especially the ones that teach free grace, who defend it crazily. Okay, <laughs> all right. A. Uh, they're they're not saved. They say the same thing about us saints. Okay, they offer a common salvation. It's not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. According to a free gracer, Mahat uh, Gandhi or Gandhi, he was saved. He believed in Jesus. Okay? Stalin, he believed in Jesus. Hitler! And you're like, well, Brad, you believe that Jeffrey Dahmer is saved. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You can find the entire interview of Jeffrey Dahmer. You don't have to watch what His Holiness did. What His Holiness did on Jeffrey Dahmer was wonder was really good. It was a two-part thing. Okay, if one of you saints want to put that in the comment section, I won't object to it. I won't do it myself. I guess stay away from it. I just get no, I don't want nothing to do with that guy. But his work that he did about Jeffrey Dahmer was oh, beautiful. And you see, you don't have to go there to get the whole interview of Jeffrey Dahmer where he was broken, he was contrite, he was reading the scriptures. Um, he, he, Jeffrey Dahmer was a saved man. Okay? Jeffrey Dahmer was a saved man. It's a totally different thing. 
Okay? Free gracers say that anybody... Christy Burke! Well, I don't know her heart. Well, she did believe she's saved. She's just, no, Christy Burke, that stupid head, she's not a saved person. Not at all. Never was. They offer you something that is common. But it ain't the faith that was once delivered on the saints. It's a gateway drug to Rome. Because, because, they want to bring everybody back under Rome. And Rome calls those who aren't belonging to that whoredom separated brethren. We all believe in one God. No, we don't. No, we don't. They believe, Catholics believe in one God and three persons. I don't believe in that. We all believe the Bible. Which one? Huh? Atheist, right? Muslim, right? Which one? The NIV, ESV? Huh? New American Standard? Which one? I don't believe in the Bible. I believe in the scriptures. The authorized version. There's a difference. Hmm? Christians are going through the Great Tribulation. You're right. Christians will be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, they'll, they'll be left behind. But the saints, okay, the saints get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Today, you're once saved, always saved. Okay? Why is Christianity so divided? Hmm? It's a smorgasbord, right? Because what is Christianity today... It's not the common salvation. Atheists, lost people, look at the buffet line that Christianity is. And well, if you don't like that one, you can go to that one. Okay? And common, available to all. Charismatics. Okay, that you gotta but you gotta be dipped in water and you gotta speak in tongues, or like some whack jobs that I've encountered, you gotta see or audibly hear God. Okay, that's not common salvation. Okay? That's not. That's exclusive. But see, the faith that was once delivered on to the saints is exactly that. Is exclusive. It is exclusive. Okay? And that's the thing. And why, why are there so many divisions? There are Methodists, German Catholics, Lutherans. There are Pentecostals, uh, uh, Presbyterians, uh, <laughs> Libertarians, Universalists, Calvinists, <laughs> Baptists. And, and lost people, God is not the author of confusion. Well, they all basically believe the same thing. No, they don't. No, they don't. They all base the Bible, they all believe the Bible. No, they don't. They don't even believe their Bibles. And guess what? Atheists and Muslims point this one out so we don't have to. The Bible, all the Bibles, they don't even agree with one another. They don't all say the same thing. Okay, this, this, this is the authorized version. This is the scriptures. Okay, yeah, it says Holy Bible there. Within the pages, it doesn't say Bible. Okay, it doesn't even say that in the Bibles. Okay, but see, distinction. This is the scriptures. Those are Bibles. Those are a collection of books written by man. This is the scriptures. Perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration of God. There's a big difference. Okay? Huge difference. Ought to be about distinction. Not everybody believes the scriptures. They don't. They don't. And you atheists and lost people, you see that? It's like well, if I don't like this one, I'll go to this one. Your preference. It's a its a buffet line. It's a buffet line. I don't want chicken wings. I want crab legs. I don't, I don't like the way those crab legs taste. So I want some of that Mongolian beef. Oh, I like my Mongolian beef. You know? I don't want that. I want that lasagna. Are there many paths to God? Huh? And see, the premise of ecumenicalism, free grace, yeah. Well, they got to believe in Jesus. Which one? Which Jesus? And there are those like, well, Brad, you don't understand what Christianity is. I hope I do. 
What does the word Christ mean? It means anointed one. It means anointed one. Well, you're going, you're a Christian. You're going after Christ. Which one? The Christ of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Or that one who will be that man of sin, the son of perdition? Which one? Hmm? Which one? I'm not a Christian. I'm a saint of the church of the living God. Which is ground and pillar of the truth. Or pillar of ground of the truth. I get that backwards. Okay? See, you, you atheists and lost people, you see. And you know what? And, and, and two, got to hand it to the Messianic Jews. Okay? The Messianic Jews, now, a lot of the Messianism that's out there, the Hebrew Roots Movement, which want to incorporate going under the law. Okay, Paul talks about that. I'm totally against the Hebrew Roots Movement, totally against it. But at least the Messianic Jews see what is Christian and can recognize where it comes from and wants nothing to do with it because it's a laughing stock. It's a joke. Okay? It's a joke. It's a joke. There is one way. Go to John 14. John 14. John 14. Verses 1 and verse 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. Whither I go, ye know. And the, the way ye know. The definitive article. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we, not, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And you, you can go ahead and read the context on your own time, or where the Lord says that he's the Father. Okay, which, of course, free grace is the worst of them all, the gateway drug onto Catholicism, okay? But there's only one way, Jesus Christ. Well, all Christianity preaches Jesus Christ. No, they don't. One God in three persons? That's not Jesus Christ, okay? All right? Rightly dividing the word of truth? They don't do that. Okay? <laughs> all right? Christianity, all of Christianity don't preach the same Jesus. They don't. There is one way, the way, the truth, and the life. Atheists, lost people, it's like, okay, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, all this. There's, there's differences there, but they all believe in the same God. Yeah, and yeah, Christianity does. One God in three, satanic, it's, it's blasphemy. One God in three persons, that was created in Babylon, okay? Crafted in Egypt, perfected in Rome. It's satanic, okay? Christianity doesn't have the right God, okay? All right, yeah, an anointed one. That man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? But there's one way. One way. The way. The truth. The life. Okay? All right? And John 10. John 10. John 10. Verily, of verses 1 and 2. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold... But climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. And verses 7 and 8. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Thieves and robbers. Climb up some other way. Giving you another Jesus. Okay? And when you go to 1 Corinthians... 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 
Okay, all these Christian demonations out there, they don't all preach the same thing. Okay, a majority of them do preach the same God, one God and three persons, which is not the God of the scriptures. Okay, the, the Pentecostals preach a one God who has different modes. It's called modalism. Okay, that he was first, the Father, then He was the Son, and now He's the Holy Ghost. No, no. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Modalism is not the truth. Modalism is closer to the truth than the satanic three-person trinity. Absolutely. Okay? But it's not God taking different modes. Okay? It, it doesn't work that way. Read Genesis chapter 1, the first three verses, okay? That's not uh, God taking different modes, all right? That's not, all right? But 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Fortunately, that's not how it is, is it? Is it? Okay? Look at how Baptists and Methodists and some of these extreme Baptists get. Look at how Pentecost, look at how Catholics, even though they're whores and want to bring, bring everybody together and their favorite daughter, I believe, is free grace. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. And you atheists, you lost people. You look here on online, you know, it's like there, there's a lot of contentions in Christianity. Okay? Aren't there? Mm hmm Yeah. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Kephas, and I have Christ. Is Christ divided? Come on, a atheists. You atheists. Okay? Atheists. You believe in a God yourself. But what? Okay. Atheist. Hey, atheist. Come on. Look at what look at what you're being presented as Christian. Is it not divided? Is it not divided? Even amongst the King James Bible believing Christian movement, which is now just another demonation. Okay? It really is. Is Christ divided? In reality, no. But when you look outside your doors, it seems to be a yes, doesn't it? Was Paul crucified for you? What's your favorite teacher that you worship in there, huh? Okay? Like in verse 12, you know. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Brian, and I am of Peter Bruckman, <laughs> and I am of Gene Kim, <laughs> and I am of Robert Breaker, okay? Hence the problem with Christianity. Getting ahead of ourselves, but let's keep reading. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words. Calvinists, free gracers, Catholics, even some Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians, German Catholics, okay? <laughs> not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. 
but unto us which are saved. It is the power of God. Hey, you don't got the scriptures that says being saved, doesn't it? Like ritualism, you have to continually believe. You have to con continually believe, right? You Ritzlingite, always have to believe. What happens if you have a dip in your faith? Hmm? Hmm? What happens? See, Ritzlingism is veiled Catholicism, just like free grace is veiled Catholicism. Oh, it's not, it's not uh, as blatant as Catholicism, but it is a work salvation. You save yourself by your belief. You do. It's the most dangerous out of them all. I believe. Okay? And when you look in Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verses 15 on to verse 19. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect. Now, that is not sinlessly perfect. There will be links. Uh, I'm going to be a little, few links in the description box for you. Uh, this is not sinless perfection. Okay? Hey, you guys who preach, you got to stop sinning. and you, you don't sin anymore. Paul missed that memo. Paul missed that. Okay? You read Romans chapter 7. Okay? Perfect! Perfect in the eyes of the Lord because he, he cleansed you. He saved you. Okay? It's not sinless perfection. Your heart belongs to the Lord. That's what that's talking about. It's not sinlessly perfect. Okay? Again, I guess Paul wasn't saved because he didn't preach sinless perfection. He said, don't sin. Yes, but he never preached sinless perfection uh, or else it would be a total contradiction of Romans chapter 7 which will be in the description box for you to go over, okay? It's not perfect. It's not sinlessly perfect. It's perfect with the Lord, perfect in heart, broken and contrite and dependent on Him, not on your belief, not on your church membership, not that you're elect. Okay? Let's continue. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. How? Hold your place. Go to John 16. John 16, one verse. John 16, 13. John 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord is that spirit. <laughs> How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. Verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. Okay? Back to Philippians. Let's read verse 15 again. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us walk, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren! Be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many. Broad is the way that leads to death, but narrow is the way that leads to life. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now even, and now tell you even, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Why? Because the cross of Christ is death. Death to yourself. Okay? The cross is death. Okay? Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Ah, are you starting to get why Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints? Matthew chapter 16, verse 23 but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of 
man. And you read in Genesis chapter 3 that the serpent was cursed to crawl on the earth and eat dust. Mankind is dust. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 6. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the capital S spirit in the bond of peace. And you don't get peace by compromise. You get peace by truth. Okay? There is one body and one capital S spirit. Okay? Even as ye are called and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one identification, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. God's in everybody? No. God is in those who are saved. And see, that's, that's another evil thing about free gracers. They tell you, if you have a belief in Jesus, then Jesus is in you. No. The devil, thou believest, there is one God, and thou believest in one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. One God in three persons? <laughs> no. No. And remember, devils do believe in one God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. The fullness of the Godhead. Godhead is not the Trinity, dear friend. It is not. Okay? You look at the three occurrences of Godhead, it has nothing to do with persons. Okay? All right? Jesus Christ, he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One. One. Spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body, the Word made flesh. In one person, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Which 99.99% .99 of Christianity doesn't teach or preach. It's not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints, dear friend. But we've already touched on the problem with Christianity. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Carnal, carne, fleshly. That's what carnal means. Fleshly. Carnival Bazaar. Go to the carnival. What is the carnival? All about gratifying the flesh. You look the word up yourself. Uh, in scripture first. Then go ahead and go to Webster. Okay? Carnal is fleshly. Carne, carnal. Okay? It's fleshly. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. And st strong meat is for those who are, have been in the faith, while milk is for babes. Okay? All right? For ye are yet carnal, fleshly. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Mere men. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Their God is their belly. The, the thumbnail, the smorgasbord, the buffet, Christianity. And the atheist comes, it's like, dude, one way 
the way, the truth, the life. How do you explain all that? That's not of God. Christianity is not of God. Oh, look, look, uh, by the way, those of you guys who want to defend that, well, it used to, it doesn't matter what it once was. What is it right now this close to the redemption of the purchase possession? Huh? For well, what one saith, verse 4 again, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted Apollos water, but Peter Ruckman gave the increase. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. But Brian gave the increase. Excuse me. Excuse me. But uh, Gene gave the increase. Robert gave the increase. <laughs> Richland gave the increase. But God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. And then when you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, <laughs> verse 4, okay? Oh, excuse me, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, excuse me, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I was right there, okay? Well, one second. Sorry about that. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 under verse 5. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Christ's sake. Now go back, now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 18 on to verse 20. Okay? Now some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God, spiritual, is not in word, but in power. They profess that they know God, but they deny the power thereof. Okay. You see, dear brethren, dear people, uh, these guys can really preach good game. A lot of them. And think about this. Fleshly, carnal. Okay? Think about this. Okay? Catholicism. What do they boast? It's about themselves. They went to Mass. They were confirmed. They were baptized. Calvinists, I'm elect, you're not elect. Free gracers, my belief. It's themselves. It's their works. It's of Satan. It's not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. We preach Christ and Him crucified. Okay? They preach man. Catholicism is all about what you do. Catholic, uh, Calvinism is about all about you. Free grace, it's all about you. Satan uh, savors the things that be of man. Okay? All right? All right? And go to Galatians chapter 5, just one verse. One verse. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Okay? And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. 
Now, that doesn't mean that we don't sin or mess up. Like I said, Romans 7 expository video will be for you in the description box so you can look at it, okay, and watch it and go through it, okay? But we're not preaching ourselves. Saints, we do not preach ourselves. We preach Christ and Him crucified. So does Catholicism. But see, the means to attaining that is by what you do. So does Calvinism. Yes, but the means of attaining it are based upon you being elect. So does free grace. But the means is by what you do. Yes. Yes. It's not of God. It's not of God. And Galatians 2, 20 under verse 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Okay? And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Vain. And the free gracer, anyone who believes is saved. Except saints who preach the gospel of right. Yeah. Yeah. And about that, about that, go back to Jude. Okay, go back to Jude. Let's read verse 4 now. Let's re read verse 4. Okay? For there are certain men, crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Catholicism, Calvinism, free grace, one God and three persons. What they do, not what God has done. Okay? Okay? And again, Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2, <laughs> And this is something we've got to watch out for. Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. And of course, John, 1 John 2, verses 18 on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And now, and now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. For they went out from us, but they were not of us. This is the falling away. Okay? For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. And ye know all things, that seal, until the day of redemption. Okay? All right? False brethren brought in, unawares, who preach man. What they do, it's what you do. Like Catholicism. Calvinism, it's about you. Free grace, it's about you. Your belief. Every single one of them. Without exception. And it's quite easy to corner a free gracer on that. Very easy. It's all about, I'm saved by my belief. You think so, don't you? And see, when you see this thing called Christianity today, go to James chapter 4. Go to James chapter 4, verses 1 on verse 10. From whence comes, come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, ye, yet ye ask not. Because ye, yet ye have not, excuse me, because ye ask not. Ye ask, and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Well, God's answering all my prayers. Who's answering those prayers, buddy? Huh? Huh? You're, uh, you're asking contrary to what the Lord would want for you? You can find that out by Scripture. Okay? 
You're asking for things to consume it on your lusts, to uh, uh, promote yourself, and you're saying, God gave that to me? Who's answering your prayers? Probably isn't the Lord. Okay, let's continue. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And here you come with the free gracer who say, hey, you don't have to worry about anything. Just believe and you're saved. Okay, yeah, you shouldn't do that stuff, but don't worry about it. You believe on Jesus, you're saved, so you can go ahead and live like the world. You shouldn't do that, but don't worry about it. See, that's, that's the ecumenical whoredom of free grace. You're a bunch of whores, okay? <laughs> Catholicism has a rigid thing of um, legalism, you could say. So does some of Calvinism. Traditional Calvinism was like that, okay? The Calvinism that is being today would have Calvin uh, doing pirouettes in hell, where he's at right now, okay? Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Look at that. Uh, that's a lowercase s. The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Lost people? Lowercase s? Not the Lord. The Lord is that spirit. If the Lord is in you, God, the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost is that spirit. Okay, the Lord is that spirit dwells within you okay he doesn't go after envy okay all right but he giveth more grace wherefore he saith god resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble submit yourselves therefore to god begins with that resist the devil and he will flee from you <laughs> you can't resist the devil unless you submit yourself to god first Otherwise, the devils will say, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Brad, that's talking about what they are doing. The book of James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, by the way. We are looking at this for our instruction in righteousness. Don't you? Haven't you figured that out? No. Oh, because you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Because people will go say to you that uh, works are required for salvation today, right? They'll go to James chapter 2. Uh, no, that's for the time of Jacob's trouble. I prove it to you that the book of James is written for Jewish people. Verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Greetings. Written for Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, there, an expository video on James 2 will be in the description box for you to go through, okay? All right? All right? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Being broken. Let's continue. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. And see, Catholicism gives you a false humility. But see, I've been confirmed. I've had the cookie. What you've done. Calvinism. You know, you read some of Richard Sibbs. You read the Pilgrim's Progress. You read some of Baxter, okay? about mortification, and that one guy, um, I forget what his name was, who wrote the book, The Mortification of Sin, Calvinist. His thing on the mortification of sin, uh, not too bad, but see, he's a Calvinist. I'm elect. See? Free gracers. I believe. My belief. That's what they do works it works okay and we the saints we preach Christ and him crucified 
So do all those, yes. But how do you attain to that? It's by what you do. And it's the Lord who breaks you. You don't break yourself. You see? <laughs> you see? Go to John chapter 7 now. John chapter 7. You might be saying, well, okay, Brad. How, how are we supposed to know then? How are we supposed to know what is right? Hmm? There, there's got to be a litmus test, right? And you got to watch out for these guys who have these litmus tests. Okay, if you do this, 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 then you're saved. You run into the people, and even Mark the Messenger went and did this. People who can do the, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. That proves you're saved. No, that proves that you can say that. Hmm? And even Mark the Messenger did that. Okay? Isn't it interesting that people who give you these litmus tests, that, you know, you do you step one, step two, step three, okay, you're saved. Isn't it interesting that every single one of them who pr produce to you these litmus tests can accomplish them themselves? Isn't that interesting? Huh? For example... You got to remember in the book of Exodus, and we're not going to look at this today, in Exodus chapter 7, verses 11, under verse 12, and also in verse 22. Exodus chapter 8, uh, 7 and 8. Read chapter 7 and 8. You see that the magicians of Egypt, they were able to turn their rods into serpents, just like Moses and Aaron. The magicians of Egypt were able to turn water into blood. The magicians of Egypt were able to call frogs out. Okay? See, there are those out there today who can mimic, who can mimic fruits, meat, for, or works meat for repentance. They can mimic being filled with the Lord. They can. But see, there's only so far they can go. Because when you continue to read in Exodus 8... You know where the magicians couldn't continue? When the Lord took dust and turned... Think about this. The Lord took dust in Exodus chapter 8 and turned dust into lice. Dust, dirt, he turned into lice, a little bug. Think about that. God took dirt and turned dirt into into something living. Well, the, they did that with their serpents, didn't they? Hmm? Not in the manner of the mites, of the dust, and turned it into lice. Took dirt. See, you, remember, wood, a tree, wood, is a living thing. It's not breathing and whatnot, but, you know, atheists and whatnot in science, you know, it, it bleeds, you stab it and what, not like that. You have dead wood, rotten wood, okay? All right? It's not breathing and living like man breathes, but it is, it is a tree has some fo a form of life in it, right? Atheist, right? You know science, right? Right? Dust is dirt. Dust is dirt. God took dirt and turned it into lice. That's where, that's where the fake can't do it. They can put on these vain, vain little shoes, the suspension of disbelief, the facade, but they can only go so far, okay? They can only go so far. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Uh, Exodus 7, 11, verses 11 through 12, you read about the magicians. Also in Exodus 7, verse 22. Exodus chapter 8, verse 7. You go check that out. Okay? John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verses 14 on to verse 18. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? They were saying that of God the Father who wrote the book, who created them. 
Imagine the chutzpah. Like these pastors in the buildings that got the $100,000 piece of paper on their wall. You ever talk to one of these people? They, every time, they take their Jesuit education and throw it in your face. But they were doing that with God, the Father. Wow! Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. Catholicism seeks the glory of Satan. Calvinism. I rest my case. Free grace. It's all. It's got to be you. Okay? Just believe. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him who does the sending. The root for apostolos, okay? Sent one, okay? Galatians chapter 1. And little stupid head, uh, Christy Burke, you know, not saved. Of course, doesn't understand that. That child is stupid. But we've, we've talked about that. We ain't talking about that no more. Galatians chapter 1, verses 10 and verse 12. For do I now persuade men or God? Well, think about this. For someone who wants to prove themselves to be righteous, Catholicism probably works well because, hey, I did, I did all I know, all I can do to hopefully be saved. Calvinism, well, there must have been something good in me for God to elect me. Free gracers, hey, I just believe, huh? It's man-pleasing. Christianity is man-pleasing. For do I not persuade men? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. Christianity and lost people, atheists, can figure this one out. Is man-pleasing. It's a, it's a buffet line. Okay? They, in some of these church buildings, they offer you coffee, donuts, and all this kind of stuff. It's all about making you feel good. It's about your feelings. <laughs> okay? All right? But I certify you, brethren, the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay? And see, the faith, the common salvation, the faith that was once delivered on to the saints is based off of what? Death! You have to be born again. You have to die to be, be born again. You have to be broken in order to be fixed. Calvin, hey, you're elect. Don't worry about it. Free grace. Hey, just believe and you'll save yourself. Catholicism. There's a breaking in Catholicism. You can read the spiritual exercises if you want. But see, that leads to a, well, I've been confirmed. I've eaten a cookie. I go to Mass every day. I, I say the rosary. I put on the ornaments. Uh, okay. Man-pleasing. Man pleasing. And see, you gotta remember in First Timothy chapter two, God wants what? What is God's will? What is God's will for today? First Timothy chapter two, verses three under verse six. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men, Calvinist. All men. Well, that's in context for the elect. Go to hell and be with your buddy Calvin. Okay? Shut up. Okay? Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all Calvinists to be testified in due time. 
and 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants everyone to be saved. But unfortunately, that does not mean that everyone is going to be saved. God has chosen the cross. The cross is death to self. And that's why Catholicism replaces it. Calvinism puffs you up. And uh, free grace oversteps the death, the brokenness, the contrition, and the fear of the Lord. And calling upon his name. Okay. God wants all men to be saved. And see, like I told you, there are many out there who can give you like these litmus tests, right? And they themselves can fulfill it. But you got to remember, a lot of the, they're very good. They're very good. There's a guy out there that, in Oregon who's really good at it. Real slick. Unfortunately for him, he has been exposed as teaching work salvation. Okay. Yes, he has. Okay. But he's real slick. Real smooth. Real smooth. Okay. Who can fulfill his own little thing that he gives you? Okay. And see, that's the thing. Well, how do we know? How, how do we know? There are those that are obvious. There ain't no such thing as a saved Catholic. Catholics aren't saved. Calvinists, it's all about them. It's all about pride. Free gracers, it's all about their belief. Okay? All right? There's no new creature there. All right? There are those that are obvious. That's like, <laughs> yeah. It's so obvious that Muslims and atheists and lost people is like, you're saved and you're just like me? Wait, what? What? But there are those that are not that obvious. How do you know? It takes time. We don't have time. No, we don't, do we? Because at any given moment, the Lord could say, Come up hither, we get redeemed, and then all hell's going to break loose. No, we don't have the time, do we? But see, it takes time. It doesn't take that long. <laughs> took a couple of years for certain people to figure it out. Others, like I said, it's like you, you, uh, uh, Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Verse 10 under verse 11. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Okay, I'm hearing what you're saying. Okay. And they searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. You have people like Jean Boschoff who's in hell. Uh, Bible is mark of peace. Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Mark of Beast, who, who talk about not reading the scriptures. Put down the scriptures. No. You're supposed to search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. You know, you've heard the term be a Berean. I say it. Okay? People will say, well, the Bereans were lost. But see, they were looking. They were, that doesn't subtract away from the fact that they were searching the scriptures. And see, that's a real wicked thing. They're, well, the, the Bereans were lost. But see, lost, they were lost people who were searching the scriptures. Okay? For that argument. Okay? They were searching the scriptures. They received the word readily. It's like, okay, I, I want to believe it. Prove it to me. Prove it to me. Okay, let's see. Okay? Oh, dude. See, that doesn't subtract from the fact that they what? Received the word with all readiness of mind. They were ready. They wanted to hear it. 
and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. How do you know? Scriptures are telling you. The scriptures tell you. The scriptures tell you. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 13, on to verse 16. Till I come, give attendance to reading. Gone with the wind? No. Scripture. To exhortation, to, do to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the pres presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in, in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Not say as working to be saved. No. But shewing yourself approved. Ah, yes. Second Timothy Chapter 2, one verse, one ver verse 15. Study. What are you studying? The scriptures. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, which Catholicism does not do, Calvinism does not do, free grace. We're, we're dispensational, but yet, it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. You're not dispensational. Okay? They don't do that. Christianity doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. And what happens when you don't study to shew thyself approved unto God? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. God is ashamed of you. God is ashamed of you. Because you're taking everything, mixing it together, and say, saying that it's all written to you. Look, dear friend, this is written for you. It is. It is. It's not all written to you. Well, what's written to me today? Doctrine primarily found within the Pauline epistles. Well, we're in 2 Timothy. Uh, chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. <clears throat> All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man... Of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Well, how are we supposed to know? Search the scriptures. A lost person searching the scriptures has more advantage than a Christian who doesn't even read a Bible and save themselves by their own belief. It takes time. It takes time. It takes time. One second. Sorry about that. First Timothy chapter 5. Some men's sins are open beforehand. Verses 24 and verse 25. Some men's sins are open beforehand. Going before to judgment. And some men, they follow after. Likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. It takes time. We don't have the time. You're right. But it takes time. How long? I don't know. It depends. Depends on the situation and whatever. But, you know, like I said, there are some that are brazenly obvious, then there are some that are not that you have to listen to for a while, you have to search the scriptures, compare what they're saying with the scripture, rightly divided. If someone doesn't, number one, use the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, get away from them. They, get away from them. 
They ain't rightly dividing the word of truth. Get away from them. Okay? Two basic things to start with. If they ain't reading the scriptures, if they're not rightly dividing the scriptures, the word of truth, get away from them. Get away from them. Takes time. Takes time. That's going to be it for this video. Just a little quick one again. Um, there'll be links for you in the description box for you to consider. Um, brethren, people, it's time to abandon Christianity. And come back to the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. You're saved today. You're a saint. We are the church of, God, the church of God, which is the church of the living God. The ground and pillar of the truth. So, thank you so much for watching this. If you do, hopefully this helps you. There will be a lot of links for you in the description box. And uh, just thank you, brethren. And Lord willing... We will speak again later.